This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Previously, in part one, we saw how white storks return every spring from Africa to rear their families around Dalian in southwest Turkey. It's an area of mixed farming, linking old and new, to which the storks must adapt if they are to succeed. They nest all around, on mosques, trees, electric pylons, specially provided platforms on poles, and in this case, on a chimney of an old house in the village with four eggs. The locals say the nest is 28 years old, materially having been added over time. Storks see a lot down below, and these young children will probably see a lot of changes as they grow up. Dolls to computers, no doubt. They are free-range children. Like the chickens, part of the traditional family. This is a productive time of year, early May. Soil not yet dried out, orange blossom in full flower. And free range sheep too. The stork pair keep an eye on each other and must also watch out for the increasing number of wires strung out around the expanding village. It seems the story of storks bringing babies, though not in wheelbarrows, is universally adopted, if that's the right word. They're certainly devoted parents sharing duties at the nest. And they regularly confirm that bond by noisy displays called clattering. What storks eat, what goes into chickens and their eggs, which we eat, comes from the soil and or the water not far away. Though in Africa, storks can be poisoned by eating locusts that have been sprayed with pesticides in an attempt to control the swarms. This is probably more about green fly, but it will end up in the soil or water runoff. In the past, they didn't know about antibiotics for cattle and chickens and there was no risk then of storks ingesting chemicals when they went off feeding in the fields. In some places, house sparrows have become quite rare. In the past, they were everywhere. So why have they declined? Lack of insect food for the chicks later, perhaps. There's certainly not a nest site problem around here, and 28 years worth of it. And there's more to come. Paper delivery. Flower delivery.
and time for young life. It will be some time before this tiny naked chick grows any proper feathers, but it's warm now in May in southwest Turkey. For the adults, it's essential to maintain their flying equipment in top condition. A special toe does the job under the chin and beak. Elsewhere, particularly the flight feathers, must be sorted out and continually checked. They're incredibly strong and light, though this one seems to have got out of alignment. Important with such a streamlined shape. But oddly, it doesn't get preened into place. The wide wingspan is supported by an airframe of strong light bones carrying the main primary flight feathers. Over the top lie layers of smaller feathers, which must also be carefully preened. Usually it's do-it-yourself, but sometimes there's help at hand, or at least at beak, for parts you cannot reach, and that also reinforces the pair bond. Flapping, gliding and soaring are how storks fly. They're birds of open ground, searching for fields, streams, marshes, in fact, anywhere where they may be able to catch insects, frogs, fish, even small mammals like mice and foals, and almost anything that moves, if it's not too big, down on the farm. Sparrows are dust bathing. Or feeding, not the farmer's friend exactly. Storks keep their nests tidy and clean, so they, as it were, fly over the edge. Not so good if you're the sparrow minding his own business underneath. As the chicks grow, the menu changes. The parents now go fishing in the streams, rivers and lakes that have been fed by the winter rains and melting snow in the mountain.
There are other fishermen here too. Grey mullets sell well in the big towns. And also boats go down the river from Dalian to the sea to catch what they can. But the number of boats doing this has dropped a lot. So as the water level, as the original marshes have been drained by a network of irrigation channels and pumps, as well as domestic needs. Storks will face this problem later when their chicks are big and thirsty in midsummer. Where there might have been fish and frogs for food, the parent now searches dry land for something to eat. The lifeblood has been sucked from what were wetlands. The remaining ditches are a sanctuary, sort of for one of the stork's favourites, frog food. But there are many more to come, it would seem, in the shape of tadpoles. If these waterways are not mistreated, fish can flourish in their clarity, food like frogs for any stork family. But when fertilizers and other chemicals reach them, the result is death by blanket weed. Basically a green desert though it may look a good green place to live. So it's two-way traffic, from the farms to the streams, rivers and lakes, and finally the sea, often treated as a dustbin. Food from farms around the nest brings the problem back to the growing chicks. They get delivered a partly digested pile of what must be great, if you're a hungry, fast-growing stork chick. It's not clear why the parent recycles these goodies. Humans are nesting here too, more and more of them. Some, like the storks, are summer visitors, though mainly from Europe rather than Africa. Everything from big resorts to individual villas, spreading out around Dalian. This means less space for storks to forage, although now development is more carefully planned than it used to be. And this is how it used to be not a swimming pool in sight. Some cows are still here on bits of grass between the villas, with the famous ancient rock tombs of Dalian, a brooding memory of the past. Newer? Yes. More interesting? Probably no. The storks have seen the changes from their viewpoints at the nest, or over Dalian itself, where other wildlife lives alongside man, if you know where to look. The little bitten is elusive, a great reed acrobat below the rock tombs. Whether it's birds or turtles, green tourism is an attraction at Dalian. A very different scene to, say, crazy marmaris along the coast. Quiet meets noisy. 
People hope they will all be quieter soon. And slow is important too, for a hidden speciality, one at risk to noise, propellers and boat wakes. The Nile River turtle, an odd looking customer, quite rare, but will come to be fed at your Riverside Hotel. And he likes hard boiled eggs. Soon the chicks will be able to do this too, but they need a little practice before finally taking off. And now for something to drink. No, not at the swimming pool, but looking for somewhere with shallow water away from people. Storks can be shy away from the nest. Storks could well be the symbol of Dalian, though it is the sea turtles of famous Itusu Beach which has been protected for them since 1988. As the peak tourist season arrives and the sun fries Dalian, its attractions become more and more aquatic. Itusu Beach and sea turtles rock tombs by the river and many boat trips from the town centre downriver to that glorious long sandy beach is Tuzu. Soon they'll be able to fly like this and they'll need to to travel 3,000 miles to Africa across sea, desert, grassland and jungle. 
and possibly being shot at by hunters. But they proved themselves to be very adaptable, a vital asset on this fast-changing planet, such as here in southwest Turkey, where trees are grown carefully in lines, soils drained, crops sprayed and fertilized, all required by modern farming methods for an increasing human and also livestock population. A great advantage is that mostly humans like you, and so far you don't compete. And so as pairs or rejected singles, the storks of Dalian and their families set off south, past the rock tombs and down the river towards the sea. Nests are emptying from mosques, roofs, treetops, electricity pylons and platforms on poles. Eagles are migrating too, eyes fixed on the distance. Like the storks too. They're past, present and future, interwoven with man. But are they, and us, winning or losing? Time will tell. <laughs>